Hey everybody, welcome to this week's Fateless Podcast episode. It's going to be a special one. It's our first time bringing somebody from the Magic Media team. And then we're also going to be joined by Sham and Simon. So I will first pass it to Esther uh, to let us know what you do over there at Magic Media and uh, give us your, your background story here quick to kick us off. Okay, um, so I am one of the concept artists from, from the Magic Media team and we, that we are working with Fateless. And I'm kind of in charge of how the characters are going to look from outside. And then I collaborate with other concept artists such as Alex, which is our fantastic art director, and Nice as well. And as for my background, um, well, I started in this industry, the game industry uh, two years ago. Um, I studied fine arts and as soon as I finished my fine arts degree, I entered, I directly entered into the video game industry, which was a surprise. So I have um, something like a more classical training, like I learned how to paint and draw and sculpt traditionally, um, other techniques like in rev engraving, I think it was. And the last year of my, of my uni, um, Degree, I think it's the name. Yeah. Um, I started uh, touching some things like illustration and a blender, for example, but it was a very, very basic stuff. I, I knew how to do illustrations um, for years because in my free time, uh, I obviously was painting all the day. And the way I got into fine arts was uh, kind of tricky because I was starting to be an engineer like a software engineer <laughs> oh, okay. and I was doing pretty fine uh, except the last year because I noticed that what I was studying at the time um, I didn't like it and I started feeling really really bad because I couldn't express myself the way I wanted because I didn't have time to 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 paint or to you know express myself so at the last moment, I decided, okay, no, no engineering, let's go to fine arts, which was like, the, uh, I don't know, it was very big for me and my family as well. Like they were super supportive. So I didn't have a problem with that, but it was like a big plus, plot twist of my life <laughs> at that moment. And yeah, that's, that's how uh, I how, got here. <laughs> how did you find going from canvas to basically painting on on you know computers or max or, you know, or whatever you i've done a, i've done a bunch of like oil painting myself if, if you was to ask me to try and do the same in photoshop i've got zero <laughs> talent to do that so it's very different right um yeah how did you find yeah. that so i i think so but uh this is um a curious thing um i started with digital before um, oh, okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Because, right. um, well, I obviously did some sketches on some notebooks and colored it with colored pencils and stuff. But at the same time, I started playing video games. Um, I got my first um, drawing tablet in digital, and I was I was also painting with the mouse. In, in yeah. MA oh my god, that's that's yeah. intensity right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. And, and well, I know my first timeline and I kept drawing and drawing and drawing. <laughs> and then when I got into fine arts, I started taking traditional art more seriously. And it was very fun. I loved it because lots of techniques I learned uh, during those years are, uh, I can translate them to digital pretty well because the fundamentals are the same. I always say that fundamentals are like the most important thing for, for an artist or actually for, right. for everything mm -hmm. in, in any career. If you know your fundamentals, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. So do, do, you, do you find yeah. that um do you find that like your your computer science background? So like I mean you're saying you were in for for coding, was it computer science? Like you were you were I there didn't never from... get into coding. It was like it was my last uh high school year and we have to do a, like a big test and then okay. uh with that the the score you get uh you can get in the university you want. 
like I got a very high score. Like I could um, even do some like medicine and stuff and something like that. But obviously I got into finance because that was my passion and I was very committed to to my goal. So it was just working out. <laughs> but 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 so but so you have an analytical mind, I guess. Like I, I think a lot of people, what's what's really interesting when someone comes from a computer science background and they and they go to like a lot of other things whether or not you went into computer science if you have kind of that analytical mind or a mind for like breaking things down into small steps yeah i imagine that helps a lot for kind of maybe maybe you could talk a little bit more about the specific work that that you do that you do you know for fateless because we we do we have lots and lots of characters that we're going to be making and you know you're a pretty integral part of that process right of actually breaking these characters down and reusing maybe you could talk a little more about that yeah sure um, it's true that like that, that analytical mind uh, helps helps me a lot to do anything really because uh, art some sometimes gets pretty chaotic like which is a good thing but when you have a deadline I think it's super important to have everything organized and if you are studying a character which is my case I try to make sure that. I am informed about that character that I know the myth or if the design team, um, uh, for example, give, gives me pieces of information, I try to to sign synthesis them on, for example, Amino board, Figma board, or even Google Docs. Yeah. Uh, on other projects I have been in, um, I used to take notes of everything the client said. So, then I cleaned those notes and then made a mood board based on those notes, which was super helpful. And it was like, okay, it's like I'm reading the client's mind sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> but it's just that organization I have in my head. You heard it here first. We have a mind reader on the team. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Keep going. Good hands. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how, how long does it take you to do one of your kind of like 2D concepts? I've sh I've shown a few of them now on the channel, and actually showed the one that you you drew for us, you know, for Hippolyta. Uh, how long did that take from a beginning concept through to basically having like two or three of the same model in in different designs? I was try uh, to have uh, one day for research, and at the end of that day, I tried to do like a roller sketch, or I'm exploring body, the face. Um, and uh, sometimes I I also get into like the the almost finished design, but then the next day I focus on polishing. And if if it's necessary, I do a couple more more iterations. Also depends on the project because uh, here I do like three iterations, or now I'm doing like one iteration, and then it gets like some rounds of feedback, which yeah. is also nice for me. Like I'm comfortable with all those um, processes and what was saying? <laughs> uh, I was saying? Like so, so just like in, in total, like how long, how long do you think it would have taken you then to do, take Hippolyta mm. as a, a good example? In the best scenario, uh, three days, I think. Yeah. Like according to standards, like industry standards, I might be slow. <laughs> <laughs> I want to improve that, but I also want to, give you guys some uh, quality and speed at the same time. So I'm trying to, to learn and balance that. I Meanwhile, I, I try to study other um, more experienced artists. Uh, at the same time, I do the concepts. So I can't I can see how I can um, give the concept, like that quality, the speed, and also something very important. Um, I want uh, the 3D artist to look at the concept and see and say, okay, I understand uh, where each piece uh, goes. I can understand how, um, I don't know, how, how the, the, the clothing works. So yeah. I think that's very important. It's very difficult sometimes, but I want to, I, I want to reach that level. So I, I want to keep improving little by little. Yeah. So, have you ever had a go at the, the 3D side, by the way, just out of interest? Have you ever tried to do like 3D modeling in 
Yeah, I'm so bad. <laughs> I'm so bad at it <laughs> because um, I try to. Well, I studied Blender University, but you know, coming from a very classical university here, I, I studied in Seville, which is uh, mm. the so south of Spain, Andalusia. Nice. It's where I live. Uh, they are very, very classical, like. Um, you know, like life drawing with charcoal and the model for C4U, yeah, like yeah. That, that level, classical. It was very really fun, though. But for example, like digital subjects and illustration and uh, Blender, it was very, very basic. But having the basics is good as well, because now I know more or less how I can create something out of a cube or how to like 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 an, a scene or create my own references which as an illustrator is very useful like i don't yeah. need to do like a game ready model but it helps me to to work on the concept too is is that part of your process sometimes do you do you say like okay yeah. well I've, okay yeah so you'll take like the like the model or one of the models that we have and you'll say okay well let me just do you just screenshot it or do you, and then, and then maybe draw over it? Or how, what, no, talk, how do you, um, do that? I usually talk with the 3D guys and I ask them, okay, do you have this model without textures or, or mm. for example, uh, for one of the characters, I remember using Ramses, uh, yeah, body yeah. type, and I have a library, like a captain library of these models uh, I got from the 3D team. And then I, I changed the skin color, the musculature, if I, if I could, because I know there is there are some limitations um, right now on the body types, but I want to, at least in the faces, or change something so it's not like the your uh, usual bulky guy with a lot of muscles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, we don't need them all uh, to look like Brad, just huge in build. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, uh, so that that's it i keep a library and then uh for example if i need a mesoamerican character i already have one with some uh standard i, I know there are a lot lot of type types of bases uh i would love to work on that more uh, in the future too uh i take that one and then i, I give them clothes <laughs> Yeah, it's like yeah. designing clo clothes for for a client, mm. and the client needs, yeah. uh, you know, seals, for example. <laughs> and they come back and they're like, "Oh, this one makes me kind of look a little chubbier than I want. Can you can you thin it out or whatever?" And you're like, "Yes, I've got you. Don't worry." <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, have, I have, have you, you um, like that? <laughs> I was going to say, the, a lot of the community have, have kind of like called out their favorites from what they've seen so far in videos. And by the way, anyone watching, like, write your favorite down below. We'd love to know that. Uh, have you got a favorite of, of the different designs that you've done so far, Esther? Mm, let me check. So I was going to gonna... ask that, but I was like, are we going to leak a bunch of heroes? Or something? Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Like, if there's that's one fine. that hasn't been seen before, that's, that's all good as well. Simon says it's fine. Uh, yeah, fine. I love it. <laughs> Dan, Dan's going to be coming in like... Yeah, yeah. Hold on. There, there is one... Uh, I can say it. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I can see it. the faction. Uh, I mean, I have lots of favorites because they are so different. Yeah. And but I really liked uh, Jang Wang from, yes. from the Jade Empire mm -hmm. because yeah. I really okay. like like characters with lots of flesh and blood and stuff like that. That yeah. was intense. Yeah. Uh, so when you were coming up with that, I'm sure you 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 were reading up on on Yan Wang and you were like, okay, well, he's got all this kind of dark stuff going on, like. Was that is that something that you you really enjoy? Like, is that is that is there something you would do outside of this? Like, like is that your what, style? What's, what are you what's your trying style? to ask, Shab? You know what, what are you mean? trying to ask? Well, no, no, no. no. <laughs> like, 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 what what's <laughs> what's your style? I guess with with uh, if you were just uh, you know, we said okay, Esther, or Esther, I'm, Esther, you're gonna have to say it again, <laughs> Esther. No worries. Um, what what's what's like your your go to style? Just like for you, is that part oh. of it? Or? It depends on the story I want to, or the character I want to draw, because I have one of them, uh, which is like um, a dragon parasite, uh, like a, like it's like a, the red really good, but she gets um, 
infected by a dragon parasite and then okay. everything is flesh bones and lots of okay so there is a lot that's what i was saying <laughs> but then i have other other story or other uh, set of characters that are more like arcane like you know this okay. some, something along those lines but it's it's slowly becoming something like the other stories it's like okay. very it, it, it start very happy very you know the, the found family trouble and everything and then it gets darker and darker so, so you're saying you have a story as in you do comics and you put these out is that is that what you're saying or, uh, or what do you mean it's more like um, I wish I could write the stories because I'm not a skilled uh, re reacher or anything, but I like to imagine some situations in my head or some sort of uh, context or world, mm. and then I put my characters there, okay. and I kind of wait uh, for them to do something. Like, okay. It's like they are alive, you know, I mean, with the... Um, maybe it sounds very weird, but with, when time passes, they, they grow up in my head or they okay. change or it's it's weird. But you got some world building. It's no, cool. no, that's great. It's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's very it's cool. like I have a very big world inside my head, but I have to take it out. But uh, it's hard because it's lots of stuff. But it's very fun. I have I have a lot of fun imagining the, those words and, and the stuff. So that's why I enjoy the game art. <laughs> and 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 from from the perspective of of like so Brad uh, Brad is on the design team and we're kind of like right now we're trying to focus on okay how can we get really good information to to you guys and make sure that that gets translated whether that's with art or that's animation or whatever all, all the different elements is there anything where you're like man Brad is just really slacking. We need more of this. I'm just kidding. But but is there, is there something that where you're like, we really need more of this particular thing? Or is is there is there anything that we could that we could do to help with the process? You know what I mean? Is there any, anything extra? I, can you rephrase it? I, I, I need to know. Yeah. It, it, is there anything on the, from the design side that would help mm -hmm. you to 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 kind of to to make the characters more like more easily, more quickly? Is it, do you know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I already have like the the hero breakdown table like that's uh, very useful to me at the moment but for example if if we go like a piece of lore of lore of the character that showcases their personality or or some things they like uh you know that kind of like get to know the character even though it's it could be seals yeah i mean yeah, yeah. we we, are, we all know seals but imagine faithless seals uh has some specific preferences for I don't know for Glossy for he's a Libra whatever. he likes the color orange like yeah. like this. well actually <laughs> a, re a really good example is is like Imatep so Imatep we got the first um, design for and then we went back and we said well you know he's, he's kind of like a scholar he's almost like a Merlin of his time and then when you recrafted Imatep with all of the stuff it sells the kind of like fantasy of, of the character way more. So, you know, with the scrolls and, you know, with his kind of like gizmos that he needs to do his, his designs and stuff, all of a sudden it's just kind of gone up an extra level because you understood the vision for the character. So, um, yeah. Yeah. In the case like of gods, of for example, they have several attributes, uh, especially like a more familiar with Greek and Egyptian um, mythology because I studied them at Barbara Uni oh, and wow. all of them have attributes like Osiris for example he has green skin it's mummified and yeah. he has this crown this a death crown uh, because it symbolized something I think it was uh, one of the Egypt uh, the, the Egypt I think where about them yeah Exactly. And I always try to to take those elements so we can make that character recognizable, uh, yeah. even though the rest is totally different. And But for example, for, for other characters, maybe other projects, um, that the character is more like, it's not a god, it's a, an original character. Um, I always uh, need to know like how the character is like if there is a back backstory because sometimes I see some interesting lines in the backstory and then I take um, those details from from the backstory and then I put them into the design. Right, they're like yeah. very aloof yeah. or they're very 
or they're you know angry about something and you're like okay yeah sweet we're gonna put that that that, that yeah. makes sense yeah it's like um I mean, I, I, I am, I'm not good at writing, but for example, I always say, I always say that we concept artists, we tell stories without words. Well, concept artists and illustrators too, like artists in general, but in concept, um, we are like representing an idea of, so, or of something, but you can get to know the character um, seeing just what they wear on on their clothing, the details. Um, yeah, you, you, I don't know. It's like yeah, you yeah. are seeing a story. There. I mean, that's what that's what clothes are, right? It's it's your it's it's you're projecting your personality into the world in, in a sense, right? So I think that's you know, like you said, you you kind of have these these bare models where they're just kind of standing there like this, right? And then once you start putting the clothes on them and you put start putting, you know, the accoutrements and all the the crowns, it's like that's when the character comes alive. And and you're right, it's exactly. visual storytelling. Like that's a well, and, and actually goes a step further, doesn't it? Because we still see all of our concepts in this kind of like T pose right now. But T-pose. when we then get them, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when we get them in game and they've got their stance and it kind of represents what they do, that's when it take it goes to like the next level. Cause then you understand you know, what that that character's kind of made to be. And um it's it's quite interesting kind of seeing it going from level to level you know mm-hmm. for me not done not doing game design before but playing a lot of games it's really interesting seeing all the different steps to actually get a character in game that looks really cool you know it's, it's way more than i ever would have thought um so yeah. Yeah. speaking of games do do you have any kind of like reference reference games that you're like oh man i i, I played this game so we'll start with that and i love it and I'm going to use the re- reference. Like you, you mentioned Arcane, for example. Like, do you play League? Do you play? <laughs> oh, we got a Final Fantasy fan. Final I Fantasy. love it. There we go. We got we got the uh, the Final <laughs> Fantasy Han Solo there. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take it from there. What what games do you have like uh, references that you just like? I'm always going back to this. I want to make my characters look kind of like this in this direction. Um, let me think because honestly, like it's a as a game artist, it's pretty ironic, but I don't have much time to play, so it's, <laughs> it's kind of sad because it's it's like I designed the characters uh, of of a of a game and or seen some designs, and I want to do the same, but you can't play the game because I'm not play the game. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. but when I when I start like playing a game, especially the ones that are like big in story, like uh, RPG, I love RPG games, like you know Final Fantasy. Yeah. Uh, actually, I started playing Final Fantasy twelve uh, some nice. months ago, but I have to oh, continue. Good. Because I don't have time for that. Oh, you didn't finish it? Oh, no. The story, no, the story is so good. Okay. But it, I, I loved it. I loved it. And like every detail, uh, I also found some textures on the walls. Like I, um, as a game artist, I have to to see like the smallest texture and how 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 they work or or the hair, for example, how the hair works or how are the the 3D models made because I'm too curious and I have to analyze that. <laughs> and I found some things that reminds me of my homeland. So it's like, oh my God, this is so cool. <laughs> I always get super excited. And other games, uh, Tales of, like, Tales of Symphonia. Uh, I don't know. Symphonia, nice. Okay, old school, uh, really kind like of old those. school games, I think. Or is there a newer um, version? Uh, Pokemon. <laughs> I'm obsessed with Pokemon. <laughs> I I don't really like the last ones. I prefer the older the older ones like Pokemon Emerald and all those. It was yeah. my first video game, so. I, oh, okay, nice. nice. Uh, I was um, it was like six years old, and then I got obsessed with that game for four <laughs> years. And Fire Emblem. I really like okay, that. So good good references. Then you're 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 in the right direction here with uh with yeah. all the references. <laughs> and I don't know, um, Xenoblade as well. I really like Xenoblade, Monster Hunter, like those those kind of games. That type of game. So 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 more of that kind of fantasy RPG type yeah, type of exactly. deal in in general. Yeah, well, I it, love those. 
if you were gonna and do you do you do any 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 sci-fi do you have any any like i mean obviously that doesn't really relate to, to the fateless project but do you do you go in that direction at all yeah actually my first project uh, in the company was a sci-fi one and it was like oh my god <laughs> this is out of my comfort zone how am i gonna do it <laughs> i did it i don't know what like, well i i found out it was actually something very similar to, I mean, the, the, the aesthetics are completely, completely different, of course, but since I, I knew my fundamentals, I was able to to adapt. And yeah. then I discovered a lot of cool stuff that, that, that I wasn't aware of their existence. And it even affected my way of clothing in real life. It was Crazy. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Because You're like, I'm, I, going, I'm some, doing future style. Like, <laughs> yeah, like tech wear and stuff like that. Um, and it was like, oh my god, I run everything for myself too. <laughs> <laughs> so you were wearing like you were wearing like a space helmet. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's awesome. Uh, okay, so so real quick, I wanted to to get back to um, a, a question I had I had earlier. So when you when you're uh, in vid- like you're, you're you're taking a character from the very beginning, right? You've got your, you know, uh, maybe you have a little bit of narrative design. Maybe you've got a little bit of character design. Um, and, and do you do any like posing with them, or do you, or like, like, like? Because for me, when I when I'm visualizing a, a person, like you just said, it's you know, clothes are are very important. But what like what I was saying, the stance is so, you know, I'm like, okay, well, you know, they've got their hands up like Vi or something, or they've got they've got the you know their big axe and they're kind of holding. Do you yeah. do that or? Or do you just say like, well, I don't have time for that. I gotta, I gotta get moving on on the different elements that need to be there. I mean, for for this project in particular, I use the typos, you know. But I imagine the characters moving in certain ways. Like, for example, when they they are holding a weapon, or if I know the character is a town, I know they are gonna move different than another character that that is more stealthy, like uh, the teenage or or, or some character like that. But uh, sometimes uh, for my own concepts and stuff, I really like to do, to do some illustrations that have the character in action, which I really like. Okay. Because you can see their expression, how, how is their personality that can also be reflected on the concept. But, you know, I have right now I have some limitations because I don't want to um put the three artists in a you know i do something very crazy like okay <laughs> let's do this character doing something crazy in the first concept i, I wanted to see the, the the clothing and uh give them a guide on how to model this and then we can do whatever with the character like okay let's do an illustration with them or or the animations for example they they also show the how the character moves, uh, how is their personality or or their attacks like that? It's also storytelling at, at the end. Yeah, the it, it. I feel like for me, it just it 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 always informs so much. Like uh, my my daughter actually, she's pretty, she's almost eight at this point, but she has like her little tablet and and like I always find her, she she spends so much time just just like drawing little silhouettes it's almost like just like um uh the stick men she'll do like a bunch yeah. of silhouettes and and then and then at that point you know and she's not she, she's very talented but she's not super advanced right she's only eight uh but she's then she, then she'll start to like yeah she'll start to like be be okay now i'm gonna now i've got the this pose or the, or the this pose or whatever it is and i'll start to 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 kind of she'll start to kind of draw that in um but that's funny. So, so, so you picture that you don't want to go too wild with the with the first concept, um, but you know, feel feel free to go a little wild. It's it's, it's yeah. It's okay. This is the thing <laughs> for, for our genre. Actually, for this type of game, some of the characters they do they go wild. Like they got yeah. all sorts of stuff hanging off them. They got like five weapons. It, it's completely <laughs> unrealistic that they could use all these things. But you know, sometimes that's the fun I mean, of it. It's almost I'm like, oh, let's just eager, find all these different things. I'm eager to design one of the characters. I I don't know if we can spoil it. I think I, I won't spoil it. But there's some specific character that I think it's very crazy 
and I'm eager to put my hands on the character yeah. because I love it. Because it has a very wide expression. Like that's the only thing I'm gonna say. Mm. But which, which faction? <laughs> which faction is this one in? Can I say? Can, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just yes, go ahead. If, and say we, it. if we need to bleep it out, we'll bleep it out. Well, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, well, it Dan, away. Dan, Dan will be like, "Whoa!" No, no, <laughs> He's like, don't tell yeah. Dan. We'll be good. <laughs> yeah, you tell us. You tell us. I think that you would figure out uh, when I, when he say the faction because they got it. I think it's very well known, at least uh, of of that mythology. Um, that's my favorite one, but it's only of the few ones I I know. Uh, let me see. Uh, it's the the Sparta faction. Ah, uh, so they don't they don't know the they don't know what the translation. So yeah, they don't know what that means. That's perfect. The Sparta. Yeah. I know. It. I okay. I I kind of have an idea for what you okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. that's too funny. Yeah, I I mean talking about wild designs. Yeah, those ones are <laughs> gonna be that list. Are gonna be crazy. Yeah, yeah I, I, I mean, I, go ahead. No, it's that I want to go very colorful on these ones. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's gonna uh, be crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, and and that's that's one of the things I think is has got to be so fun about the uh, about the job. Like I, I was talking to to Dane about this the other day. We were we were spending forever kind of going through weapons and stances for the hero breakdown, actually. So to help to help kind of speed things up or whatever. And I was like, you know, you gotta be you gotta be loving life because because basically right now what he does, what he gets to do is he's kind of like looking through uh, Esther's. I'm gonna try. I'm trying if that's right. Uh, work. And and going like, oh, this looks really cool. And then maybe he's like, well, but what if we just did added like these, these and these things? And then you guys go back and forth and it just becomes something. And and Alex kind of gets yeah. in there. It just comes something amazing. Like this trio is 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 crushing it. It's a I mean, dream well, team. Yeah. Well, we, we had a really good example, and I'm I'm actually gonna record a video on this later today. The the Horus um design, right? So Horus okay. came out and we were like. Alex did the the initial kind of model. We were like, damn, this is cool. Um, and then we were talking about it. It's like, could it be a bit more fierce? Like, could, could there be a bit more, um, a, like a deadly feel? So then Dane's kind of done his line drawing, which was super cool. And we're like, yeah, okay, this feels like a good direction. And then obviously you then add your um, colored, you know, your, your interpretation of it. And then we're just kind of like, yes, this is amazing. <laughs> it? it's, it's so great. It's, it's really cool to just see the different steps um that, that we're taking here and we go from what was already like when we showed people the original design everyone was like wow this is great <laughs> and then when we showed people the final design well we've not done it yet but i think they're just gonna like lose their minds because it's <laughs> it's such a great like final design um so yeah, so, cool. so we've actually talked a lot about like the you know all the amazing things uh, and, and 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 we have and there's so much what's been the toughest thing for you for, from transitioning to either another project or um, or, you know, what's been the toughest thing that you've kind of had to deal with moving into this, into, into, the, Fables, into the Fables game? Sometimes it's the change of the style, not, not in this project, but when I switch in between projects, I have to adapt to the style of the project. Yeah. It's, so, uh, I mean, it's not a big problem because I, I, every time I enter into a new project, I make sure to analyze and study like a bunch of artists that have the same style or I don't know, I try to to you know I analyze, study the the, the style of, of what I'm going to do. I also uh, talk with the art director to to think and make sure everything is okay and and then I start studying the style uh, uh while doing the characters. Like I study why I am designing. Like I, I try to, because I don't have time for, for studying in my free time or energy, because sometimes I um, finish my work day and I just want to take a nap or do something else. So what I do uh, for, in order to solve this problem, I, I, I don't think it's something very normal, I think. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I study, at the same time, I'm designing characters, and sometimes you can see that the first characters maybe needs, you know, something, something okay. else. But then um, when time passes, I am, I am, and I am getting comfortable with the project. Um, 
I think you can see that the characters start to improve. Yeah. I think uh, yeah. that's how I see it. Um, You're right, and, by the way. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Do you, do, you, do, you find as, do you find as well, so, you know, we're now uh, a few months into the project in terms of designing characters and what have you. Do you find that you get to a point where it's like, oh, I'm I'm getting a bit tired of, of, of following the same type of designs? Uh, you know, you sort of you said you went from sci-fi. Now we've kind of gone into into this yeah. style, which which we're working with. Uh, and, and honestly, we're going to be designing these for for kind of like months. Do you, do you almost need a bit of a mental reset as well sometimes for yourself, or do you go off and do your own thing? And and you know, it's like a different uh, style that you you enjoy as well. It's a mix of both, actually, because some some days uh, I feel like, oh my god, I'm tired because I have been doing the detailing for 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 too long, and or maybe I have been working on on a on a faction for too long, and then for me it's like the same. But that's rare because when I finish my um my day of work, I start painting something different with a different style, for example, or the same style. Like I keep exploring the style. I'm constantly yeah. studying. I, I don't I, <laughs> I never stop. Like it's I don't know how to call it. It's obsession, I guess. Yeah, that, well, and, that, that, that's, that's like it. that's yeah. like Brad. He, he, I've 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 told him several times I'm like Brad, you gotta have some time uh you know like to 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 slow down to relax. He's like he's like there's there's no chill man. There's no the, the, there's never oh, stop. Indeed. It sounds like you're in the yeah. same and yeah, whenever same. I feel like the burnout uh, coming in, I I try to to resort to other things like other hobbies I have, like reading, playing saxophone, or whatever. So Thanks. it's like okay, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Let's and, let's hear it. So what 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 do you, what do you what is your what is your uh, meditation thing? What what gets you back from burnout to? to oh, chill, that, to that's to hard. Because I am in the middle of a huge burnout that I had since last last year, uh, for personal reasons, and I'm trying to get out of it, of it. And what I do is, uh, whenever I finish, like first of all, I try to take everything easy because in my head it's like, okay, I have to, I need to deliver this concept today. Now it has to be now. I have to be the fastest, fastest. And maybe it's all in my head because at the end of the day, I delivered the concept and nothing happened and everything is fine. Uh, but I always have that little voice in my head that it's constantly um, being me to me. Oh. <laughs> so what I try to do, uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work <laughs> because uh, my mind is like that. Uh, it's just uh, I do another thing. Like I finished drawing. And then I go to, you know, I go to gym or I go to band rehearsal or I read something or watch some documentaries or some stupid series from Netflix, for example. Yeah. So do you say you play the saxophone? Yeah. Yeah. And and is that like live in front of audiences and stuff or is it just like, a, a you know, yeah, no, in what? front of audiences. Yeah. I, I, play, <laughs> I play. I play. It's weird because I I I'm terrified of um playing live in front of people, but I play in a band, so okay. I'm surrounded by awesome musicians. So I, it's like yeah. okay, I'm I'm here, but you can see me at all. You can hear me, but I am kind of at the back. But I used to be a soloist, so it was. I don't know why I did it. So you're terrified <laughs> of performing, which is which is people's people's biggest fear above death. By the way, I don't know if you know this, but tip, on average, above death, it's performing in front of people. You you decided to go solo artist or, or, or solo performance. Did you and and Laz hook up? On, uh, uh, can, can I tell this then? I think he's a he's a drummer. He's like right? a jazz a drummer, musician, yeah. Drummer, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He sends yeah. me music sheets, uh, and I constantly. Uh, looking at that, but I am not a jazz musician. I am a oh. classical one. But oh, okay, I okay, would okay. love to know how to play jazz because uh, it's super cool. But I think you need a lot of skill and you have to study a lot in, sorry, in order to to play those and improvise the stuff. Improvise, um, yeah. 
But yeah, I, I play just for fun. So I try not to worry too much about the quality of my sound because at the end, I am, I my main uh, work is uh, art, like pictorial art and not music. So I just go there to have fun. It's true that sometimes I'm very harsh on myself because of that, but I'm trying, I'm trying to relax. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's funny it's, you pick an instrument, which is kind of like you want to be in the background, but saxophone's not really in the background. No. Saxophone's like it out there. It's a very extra, it's a very extravert kind of instrument. Yeah, like, it looks very very extra. Also, uh, I just noticed that saxophonists uh, we are very weird sometimes. Like in a in a good way, we are like so, sometimes we are very silly, and it is weird because in my band. Sometimes all the saxophones uh, come to the, the rehearsal, and then we notice all of us we are we are dressed the same way, the same colors. <laughs> you follow, you follow the wind or something or the moon. <laughs> yeah, it's super weird. And then one of them starts uh, playing Carlos Whisper, obviously, and. All of the saxophones uh, go crazy, and then all of us start playing Carlos Whisper because <laughs> all of us know Carlos Whisper, obviously. Nice. And things like that. We are like the, you know, like like the cockatoos of the band. <laughs> <laughs> I, I call them the yeah. cockatoos of the band, but it's so fun to be honest. So that helps me unwind a lot. Yeah, sure. It's super cool. And and for um. So, so a lot of music, you said you, you go to the gym. Do you, do you just go to the gym and then you exercise or do you have a sport that you like to play or is it? I used to do martial arts. Uh, I don't do them anymore because I moved uh, to another place and I'm kind of terrified to, to go to another dojo. Just go to another but, dojo. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I did karate, but I, I really want to go back some someday. But at the moment, I'm like kind of terrified <laughs> because <laughs> I don't know it's like I'm so shy and then co coming in the dojo like every, every everyone is so serious there because I entered one of, of them that that was nearby and the sensei was terrified it was like <laughs> it's funny I I don't actually get a shy vibe from you if I'm if I'm honest but yeah. uh but maybe <laughs> it but doesn't maybe, look yeah. like uh, I'm shy, but I, I, I am. <laughs> like, yeah, it's funny. My, my, my wife, uh, Maraid, she, she always tells people that she's shy, but I always tell the story that like anywhere we go, like I, I'm, I'm pretty damn ext extroverted. You might've guessed that. Sham, knows. Sham will literally talk to anyone in <laughs> any situation. I've never known anyone like it. Would be just walking down the street, you see someone, and then like half an hour conversation with a random person on the street. Like <laughs> our whole GDC trip, we're all like ready to do something, and then oh. we're all like, "Okay, where's Sham? Like, wh where does Sham go? <laughs> Who's he talking to?" I had to talk. I had to talk. So, but yeah. uh, there's an opportunity to chat with somebody. But we but the funny thing is, my wife is on the same level as me. I would say pretty much. We'll, we'll be standing in line at Subway, okay, and she'll be and and, I, and I'm like, all right, this is not. A, no one wants to talk to me, right? But she all of a sudden she's she's talking to this to this woman and she's telling her our, our life story. She's like, yeah, Sham, remember when when this and this happened and, and you broke your leg? And I'm like, why are, we're at Subway? What's happening here? <laughs> but, she, but she says that she's introverted. And, and I think maybe what what that means is that, you know, for me, I get very energized by I we could I could spend all night, all day, every day chatting with people. Right. Whereas oh. like she's she's got like a, a, a battery that needs to be recharged. She gets to hear. And then no more talking. I don't. I don't want anybody to talk to me. I need to be left alone. I need to read or whatever it is. You know, like, yeah. uh, do you feel like you're like that, or is it more like that, or, or or do you not want to talk to people in public? Like, you don't you don't go out and. Um, it depends sometimes because uh, back then uh, I wouldn't be a uh, wouldn't have been. Be, uh, I don't know how to say this. Well. The thing is, uh, back then, uh, I wasn't able to to talk to anyone. It was like, don't perceive me. Yeah, I don't exist. I <laughs> and now I'm, well, I'm trying to to get out of the shell. Uh, it's very hard. Um, I try to be nice and I wouldn't say extroverted, but more social, I think. Mm -hmm. But I do yeah. have my social battery and it's very small. Okay. So it's like, um, 
especially when I go out with my friends, I need like two days to rest. Recovery. You're like, okay, <laughs> I'm done guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's yeah. funny. Well, so, I mean, speaking of, of, of uh, kind of recharging batteries, is there anything that, that you, you know, I, I think this has been a great conversation. Is there anything you want to shout out and mention uh, that, that you want to either ask us or say, or, or an artist you love or whatever it is, like, is there anything you want to shout out? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm putting it on the spot. If there's nothing, just be like, nah, I'm in a good spot. <laughs> good conversation. I mean, like, uh, I I can see a lot of things. I, I don't know. Like, uh, the, the, the shyness uh, you can see now. <laughs> no, no, no. no. I, I put you on the spot. That's anybody. doesn't matter who it is. Is going to be like, hold on. Wait, what? Oh. <laughs> um, I don't know what to say. Like, uh, if, if you give me some, well, I, I I'll, I'll give you a prompt. Who who is who's an artist okay. you really respect that you've been studying recently? Let's say that you wanna oh. that, that you're like call out. You want to call out this specific artist. You're like, wow, I love I love their art. I think that's that's maybe well, a good. The way. artist from Diablo Four. Like, oh. I love them. Oh, I have okay. been yeah, studying like them. Thing. Now you're talking for... my language. <laughs> 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 no. Like Igor Sidorenko, I think it's the name. Like I absolutely love uh, his work, and I don't know Bjorn Puri, I think it's the name. I have be, I have seen his concepts on everything is so tidy and well done. It's like, oh my god, I want to do that so sometime. Do, do you so, look on? Do you go onto like an art station and and once you found someone that you like, start to kind of look through their other work that they've done? Is that something you do as an artist? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, every day, actually, have like uh, ten art station tabs uh, open. Right. Now. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's yeah. it's amazing, uh, and I constantly look. Uh, well, at do you them. put yours up as well? Do you put like some of the, the work you're doing from like Fateless onto your art station? Is that something which? Well, like, uh, come again. Do Do you put yours up as well on art station? Do you have like yeah. your own page as well? Uh, I didn't understand. Sorry. <laughs> No, I was saying, do you, do you have your own page on ArtStation where you upload some of your work? Ah, uh, sure, sure. Like, if you uh, search for Stella Galan um, on ArtStation, you are going to find it, but it's not updated because, um, you know, I got kind of scared uh, when the AI stuff started going around and... I didn't want to put my work on the internet for a while until sure. everything was regulated. And oh man, what were I we thinking? Made... We didn't talk what? about this. Go ahead. I was like, what were we thinking? We didn't talk about this. Go go ahead. Yeah, That's true. yeah. That's a big like, topic. Um, I want everything to be regulated because at the moment I try not to use it. Like because I really love my craft and I really love my my peers' craft. So Knowing that some of the databases has my own work, I saw my work on one of them, and my friends uh, too. And it was like, I don't want to use something that um, created, creates something from, from another artist's work. So I don't know, I try, I try to, to, you know, to do something uh, the way I always have done it. That's why like, you can see my process. I uh, usually start with some shapes and then textures and, you know, I paint, <laughs> I just paint and th that's it. That's it. And I did me everything. It has been fine for me, like in, in the game industry, but it's true that I became kind of scared, I, I think, when posting things online. So some people uh, told me like, "Stay, have you stopped drawing?" And I'm, I'm like, "No, <laughs> I, I, obviously I will never stop drawing, even even though the machines take over the world. I will never stop uh, painting because it's it's something I I have always done, and it's my passion. It's something that that gives me joy, and I can share with with people." like with my friends and everything, even though it's like two people, I, I, I enjoy that. And yeah. I also made friends uh, thanks to that and knew some awesome team um, 
artists in the the company, for example. And I don't know. I think this is <laughs> this is too important to me, and that's why I I don't use this kind of stuff at the moment. It's interesting. So so and do you do you feel like this is like a like a a hard stop for you like like let's say the you know every everything shift i mean right now in photoshop you, it, it can do some weird ai stuff it can just like i just say hey put some and it's not very good yet right but if in a couple of years it, it's like it's really good would you yeah would you use it would you think you would ever you know reconsider do you feel like i'm i'm against ai because i don't like the the the, the regenerative soup that that's that it's basically taking you know reference referential soup that it's making what 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 do you how do you feel about that like if it did get better do you i mean they are, are your, getting are they are getting pretty good like uh i am not one of those artists that say okay it's ai generated it's automatically bad yeah it doesn't need to be bad they are getting pretty good and that's that's a thing but i prefer even though i know that i prefer not to use it because i mean this this would sound so I don't know. I think it's because I, I I have been always an artist and I now I know how like everything comes from my heart. I think it's, it's we sound very sentimental, I think. Yeah. But when you are skipping the process of creating and having the idea and having control over what you are creating. Uh, I don't know what's the point of making art, you know, maybe for speed and stuff like that in the industry could be, could be a thing. I will, I will keep uh, doing my, my thing the way I always have done it. And I mean, if it gets uh, regulated, I, I, I don't think, uh, I think I will keep doing what, what I use it, yeah. I, it's, it's interesting yeah. actually talking to you. Obviously you love your craft which is awesome like it, it, you're so passionate about what you do and i think some people like so take take some of us you know we see the ai art as well this is a way to get i don't know 75 percent of of the way there fast to see if we've got some things that we like the idea of before someone like yourself comes in and and really kind of layers your personal touch on top um, but it's interesting hearing you talk about it because you come from a completely different perspective of, I just absolutely love what I do. And the AI is actually just kind of like destroying some of that passion for the kind of like the initial craft. It's, it's really, for me, it's just interesting hearing a different perspective on it. Um, cause yeah. I, I don't personally, or I haven't had a problem with it because I see it as a, an addition to the quality that, that you would do. So it's almost like, well, let's get a mood board together using AI art, you know, some, some different kind of ideas. And then we can go to, to Esther and say, actually, th these are some concepts that we love. Can you now create a, something brand new? Bring um, something from your heart then. And, yeah. and basically like, you know, re referencing it almost in a sense, but man, this is, this, this would be a really interesting, uh, interesting conversation. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll have you, we'll have you on again and we can kind of uh, explore it further at some point. If that's, if that's something that you'd be interested in, but yeah, I mean, we really appreciate. Uh, yeah, I also love having that, this this chill chat about this because sometimes uh, with other friends, uh, this conversation usually gets uh, pretty, um, uh, you know, like it's angry, um, <laughs> frustrated. Yeah, yeah, angry right? because yeah. I have a <laughs> friend who is like, um, okay, but this is a tool and we can use it, and it's like. I can see your point, but I am personally not going to use it. I'm going to avoid it. If you see my mood boards, there, there is no AI inside. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I try to avoid it, but it's because I want to respect my, my, my other artists, you know, because I saw that some artists stopped, um, stopped, uh, doing their work like completely, like I give up. And for me, it was pretty sad. Like, yeah. Knowing that that we create from from the heart, the heart, even though it's maybe, you know, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's just I leave it. <laughs> as an no, artist. it totally makes sense. It's 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 mm -hmm. uh 
it's a hot it's definitely a hot topic and and yeah if, if uh at some point it, would, it it definitely would be awesome to have you back on we could have a, a longer discussion about it uh it, but yeah really really appreciate man really appreciate you spending the time and 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 giving yeah. us some insight into into this uh let's brad you want to round us out yeah, sure. Uh, amazing, uh, amazing episode. Thanks for sharing all your perspectives, Esther. And sorry if I'm getting your name wrong. I'm trying my best. Uh, no <laughs> but, worries. <laughs> it's but, uh, but yeah, thank you for thank you for touching base with us on the art side of things. It's so important in a game like this. And uh, thank you to all of you for uh, sticking by this long and watching the full episode. We'll have the links you need down below to interact with us on Discord and all of the different avenues to contact us. We'll see you soon in the next episode. Thanks. Thanks.